Um, should we use periodization for our PT clients or is that just for athletes? I think it's for athletes and for people that will train like an athlete. So really an athlete is someone that's goal orientated. So if your client has the goal to get stronger, faster, fitter, somewhere there has to be an element of periodization. And it could be such simple periodization that, okay, today we're going to do 5K and next week we're going to try and do 6K. Mm. And that's it. It's as simple as that. That is adaptation. It might start to get more specific, like, right, okay, this week in the squat, we're going to do three sets of eight. Next week in the squat, we're going to do four sets of eight. Next week, we're going to do five sets of eight. Next week, we're going to do five sets of eight with two drop sets on the last two sets. That's still really simple periodization. Mm. Um, I know a lot of trainers will get a client in for a session and they might do stuff differently every day. Today, we're going to do a bit of rowing. Today, we're going to do a kettlebell con complex. Today, we're going to drag a prowler around and then chuck a medicine ball out outside. If that gets the client to their goal of just being happier, healthier, they enjoy the variety, that's kind of almost why they go to a personal trainer, then we can't discredit the result. Will that client get better results by periodizing more of that training? Yes. But if they're not really interested in that kind of goal gap, in really going that like extra level of athleticism and they're happy with where they're at, then don't overthink it too much. Because if you keep throwing stimulus at uh, an individual, they're going to keep doing it anyway. So the chances are subconsciously a trainer will see a client in the session and go, oh, my client's gassing here. Like mm. they're really out of breath. You'll give them a longer rest period because you can see they're gassing. If they seem like they've recovered really quickly, it's like, let's go again. So already you're subconsciously putting periodization into their training yeah, by just watching body language. So we can use all these apps and you know protocols to do things and they've got their place, but it always comes back to the client and what they want to achieve. If they love random training when they come into you and they're getting feel, fitter and they feel good, keep doing that. I loved your approach to that answer, actually. If they're a goal-orientated individual, then yes. Um, that's a really quite a simple way of putting it. Um, so we, I mean, we talk about this a lot, and we talk about it as trainers, as um, like the tut our tutors. Um, you know, do you need to periodise? And sometimes we can all be a bit judgmental. We're in a gym, and you'll see a trainer in the corner. You know, and they're week in, week out. You never see him with anything. You never see him with a notebook. You never yeah. see him with a, a program or anything. And yeah. you know, they're just making stuff up. And and, and I personally I don't work that way I, I have my programs and I'm very rigid I put the data down I keep the logs and all the rest of it and I'm quite I like data I do like data and I like tracking progress um, but I've come around to the idea and I totally get that not everyone wants that mm. that's, that's, that's added pressure isn't it you know, yeah. they might have goals in their life already that they're trying to work on they don't need these added extras yeah. they might just know that if I'm physically active I'm going to live longer and I'm going to have a better quality of life mm -hmm. so just do that for me please yeah. trainer <laughs> so if we if we talk about different character types and you were training me I'm not that bothered at all about numbers right. I'm much more bothered about how I feel uh, my performance um, I'm a lot more intuitive mm. about it as a person whereas other people are like oh how many how many burpees did I do like oh what did I get yeah, like, yeah. and they want to know they want to see that if you did that with me I'm not that bothered right so you can keep all the data if you want but it's almost wasted on me as a yeah, person of course, yeah because how I view training and what it does for me yeah horses for courses there we are again um okay still a couple more questions on training um if we if we are using periodization, have you got a particular periodization model that you favour? I guess I'm thinking more for sports sports people, you know, perhaps rugby players. I'm always a big fan of things that increase volume and intensity in shorter periods of time. So I do like building work capacity in people. I think it strengthens a lot of things. What I don't really value is kind of like uh, absolute strength. Like I'm not that bothered of what my 1RM bench is or squat or any, anything like that. I'd much rather know 
how strong I could be repeatedly over time mm. when stressing multiple systems because I play a sport. Yeah. So if I can use a training model where I can fit more volume in in less time and also I'm a, I'm a busy guy, like I don't want to be in the gym. Like I know a gym, a guy down my local gym and um, he's kind of quite into powerlifting and stuff and his training sessions are like two, sometimes three hours mm. and I'm like, I have not got time no, for that. No, it's too long. And don't get me wrong, if you want to compete in powerlifting, if you want to do all that kind of stuff, then do the right kind of training. But my goal is to look good, feel good, be pretty strong, um, and burn a half decent amount of calories so I can drink more beer, mm. if I'm honest. Um, so I make the training fit for me. So um, I quite like uh, cluster training. I like doing like tri sets, quad sets. So I might do like a bench press straight into a chin up, straight into a sit up, straight into a carry because it's targeting different areas of my body, but it's also gassing my heart at the mm. same time. I'm not sure. And improve my work capacity. Alexa. Thanks, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, putting her two pennies worth in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I like volume in short periods of time. Um, okay. Sounds very. Um, and we haven't talked about it actually. Sounds like you possibly could have an interest in CrossFit. I respect the CrossFit model because it it if anything, if we looked at a system, it develops a fairly multidisciplinary individual. So it teaches people mobility, strength, but work capacity yeah, definitely as well. Work capacity, isn't it? And I think that's very valuable. It's mm. like what do most people want to do? Well, they want to be able to move pain free. They want to be fairly strong. They need absolute strength. They want to be fairly strong. And they want to be able to kind of almost feel like they can perform as an athlete. And I love that. Like if you said to me, if I walked into a training session and you said to me, Ben, we're going to do this to get this today. I want to be the guy that's like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, Ooh. sweet. And, and because I'm not bothered about dick swinging with you. So if you said, right, we're going to back squat. I'm not bothered about whether you're going to squat more than me or not. I'm like, cool. Because I don't really value that as a as a as a way to prove my prowess. Um, what I want to be able to do is feel like I can move well and be a bit of an athlete. So that's why I like that style of training. It goes back to what we were saying before about the sort of the layers and the base building and the work capacity. If you look at a lot of world class athletes, there's a story dating back, you know, years ago when they were a young athlete where they had some sort of habit or behavior that meant they, they built up an enormous work capacity compared to the less successful peers, I guess. Yeah. I, I think it's because I never want to be a specialist in training as well. Cause like, so I, I've talked quite openly, especially on my podcast before about powerlifting and um, I don't respect it that much as a discipline because it's very far away from where I'm at. Now, I respect it for people that do it for the right kind of reasons and they enjoy it, but you become such a specialist at just being strong. Mm. It's a discipline that I'm like, well, okay, I get that you're really strong, but you're pretty immobile, can't run that fast. And, and I, get, I get I'm generalizing. You can't run that fast. And there's so many other things you can't do because you've been a specialist so much at one thing. Mm. Again, if you're a shot putter, all you've got to do is throw a ball of steel really far over there. Mm. So you do the training that gets that ball of steel really far over there. If you're not that person, then break down that specificity and I would much rather people do lots of cool things. So you can be that guy that can swim 100 metres, run a couple of miles, lift good weights, gas their system, play sport. Like I, I just, For me, I'd just much rather see people be that person if they're not going to be really specific about their goal yeah I mean the strength thing you talked about especially with powerlifting it's a very specific strength too isn't it yes yes it yeah you, you absolute maximal 1RM um, and working on that it, it comes with its risks anyway doesn't it yes. um, and for most people working on your absolute maximal 1RM is quite irrelevant isn't it for most yeah if you think about the average person, um, if they increase their lower body strength, for example, um, to them, their perception of having better lower body strength means when they get out of their chair, it doesn't hurt quite so much. Yeah. Well, they can do it quicker and more efficiently. Yeah. Um, training uh, to be able to uh, body weight squat twice their body weight, you know, doesn't 
Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have any relevance. But that's a fascinating topic because strength training is all relative. Like strength training to me and you does kind of mean lifting pretty heavy weights for low reps. Strength training for a, a lady that's 60 years old will be three sets of 15 reps because mm. they're going to get stronger over time at 15 reps. But they need to be quite far away from maximal strength but you or me might need to be mm. quite closer so strength is also relevant to the person and their environment it's quite an interchangeable term anyway isn't it because often if I'm writing a blog I'll start going talking about strength training and I'm like hang on no I can't put that really because I was talking about strength training in another blog I'm referring to specifically something like powerlifting whereas now I'm writing it in the context of just moving weight whether yeah. it's for high reps low reps whatever um, so then I'll revert to resistance training um, uh, it's kind of everything isn't it really it, com- it encompasses everything um, so to be a well rounded strong and healthy individual should we train all the phases of strength now, again you've answered a lot of that but I've got down thing like um, some of the stuff we discussed earlier so general physical preparedness so all that kind of base building stuff do we need to have specific hypertrophy workouts in there as well do we need to work on maximal strength we'll actually forget that because we've already discussed that should we work on power so I think GPP really important just baseline I'm going to call it being an everyday athlete hypertrophy I think is going to be important for a high percentage of people because you know especially most guys who want to build a bit of muscle there's definitely probably a lot of females that could do with building a little bit of muscle probably in some areas of the body just to support you know being stronger being more able um you know help improve you know their metabolic rate and stuff power i think is a funny one it's like power and speed is interesting so like if you're quite a powerful person i personally feel it's quite important to generate that a bit more mm. especially from an athletic point of view now if we take someone like a 40 year old female they seem when we're in the gym with them to be quite slow twitch dominant like they are that slow and steady they'll do lots of reps they're a real workhorse and you go oh this person's not very powerful and then you start doing power training with them and their their, their, their muscle fiber type is just not going to really become much more powerful Where in the way that we think about it Um, about being able to generate um, weight with speed so it's like in that environment should we waste that much time teaching that person to be more powerful it's probably better that we just teach them to be stronger because then they'll appear more powerful because they'll be able to shift more load Mm. so um, I do think there's a there's a kind of a ceiling to where we would use something like power-based training address strength first and then I think power's like the icing on the cake isn't it I guess yeah I agree yeah um Something else I was going to say on that. Um, it's gone. It might come back to me later. I think for me, power as well. It, for me, it feels, especially like speed as well. It feels a bit more genetically determined. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I, I've seen that. Um, you know, in, in circuit classes I've done outdoors, where no matter how hard someone tries, they just can't seem to go up a gear. Mm. They just can't seem to go into that next gear. And the, and the speed they run over 100 metres, flat out, is pretty yep. much what they're then doing when we do a run around the park, yeah, yeah. the entire park. Yep. Um, so that's that's kind of my, my evidence that. The question I had actually uh, came to me was, um, or an experience I had, one of the first gyms I trained at, there was a, a gentleman that used to come in and he was in his 70s and he used to walk up to the wide grip chin-up bar, grab hold of it and just used to go like this, beautiful clean 10 long wide grip chin ups and uh, and you know we, everyone in the gym used to watch in awe and this guy was in his 70s and he looked brilliant I mean I would, I would have taken the physique when I was 18 yeah. and uh, and and there's other people that are in the gym who are 20 years younger and their postures you know they've obviously been office workers all their life mm. you know, their postures like this they moved so much slower from one machine to the next and this gentleman, you know, it jumped down off the thing and he'd walk out, chest puffed out, shoulders back, you know, very confidently say goodbye to the receptionist, you know. Mm. And uh, he was a bit of an inspiration to me. I, I never actually got to know. I never introduced myself. I was too shy. Um, but he was an inspiration to me. And I thought, wow, it's not just about building muscles to look good naked, which is very important, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about quality of life later on. Um, and I... I hazard a guess but I expect that guy has just always trained he's mm. probably done it for years 
Um, and he's now reaping the benefits in his later life. Um, so I kind of wished that message was getting across to people a bit more. Mm-hmm. My granddad's exactly the same. So probably until quite recently, my granddad's always done like 30 push-ups a day and 30 sit-ups a day. Now we as people that train a lot just think, well, is that it? <laughs> but like he has a commitment there to his physical conditioning. Mm. And, and although he's only doing a bit, he's doing something and he's always just said, well, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I don't want to be the, the old guy that needs to be helped up the stairs or have to walk the zero yeah. frame. So I'm going to keep using my muscle mass. And it was just that such simple perspective. I'm like, yeah, nice. I like Damn that. right. Yeah. And that's, um, that's such a huge amount of volume, isn't it? If you add that up, over his time period, that's a huge Every amount day. of volume. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I think is it Dan? I think it's Dan John. He says um, if it's important, do it every day. Mm. So your grand granddad obviously thought these these are two important exercises. I'm yeah. gonna do it every day. 